Hi, my name is Mark and I teach economics. In this video, we're going to talk about deflation being the purpose of economics. The whole point of economics is deflation, and yet the Federal Reserve is trying to prevent us. Let me explain. Deflation is caused by increases in productivity. These productivity increases can come from free trade, comparative advantage, technology, better organization, specialization. The whole world is getting more efficient and better at doing what it does. Think about it. In the 1800s, they used a horse pull tractor. Now we have great automated tractors and even going to robots. The world is becoming more efficient. Therefore, prices should naturally decline. The estimated natural deflation rate in the world is negative 4%. Why is this important? Because when there's deflation, real wages go up. The middle class gets wealthy. When there's inflation, the middle class gets poor the poor get poor and the rich get wealthier. This is caused directly by the Federal Reserve's inflationary policy. The Federal Reserve targets two to 3% inflation. They actually want more. They believe that inflation is lubricant, liquidity that stimulates the engine. They don't understand that the economy is not really an engine at all. It's individual entrepreneurs and people making decisions uh, to create gr greater utility on subjective value. And let me explain further why deflation increases wealth. Because wages are downwardly re rigid. Even Lord John Maynard Keynes admits this. And uh, it is an argument. Some people say they are flexible. But let's say they're downwardly rigid. That means if your employer's sales go down 50%, he's not going to cut uh, wages by 50%. Chances are he'll uh, lay you off. And so the solution is, this. If wages don't go down and they rarely go up, I know I was a boss. It's like, you know, to, in, to raise an employee's wage, it's like coming out of their own pocket. People in finance are notoriously cheap and they have guidelines from above. And this says, you know, increase one to two percent employee wages a year, maybe at that. Some people don't even get that. So the problem is wages are generally fixed. Maybe you'll get a dollar raise if you're working hourly, or maybe you'll get a little bump up if you're working salary. And if inflation is occurring like it is today, it's going to be running rampant with the monetary expansion of quantitative easing, your real wages go down. Your nominal wages may stay the same, but your real wages are going down. The Federal Reserve thinks this is a great thing. It's great for them. They're getting paid several million dollars a year. They're all millionaires. And that's true. You can fact check it. So maybe not all of them, but they're in a very lucrative situation. But if deflation occurs and your wages, nominal wages are steady, your real wages are increasing. You can buy more stuff. The argument is, oh, when prices are falling, people will not buy. First of all, that's untrue because the prices of computers and computer parts, HGTVs, flat screen TVs, they've all gone down 90% and yet people still buy them. The second idea is that, oh, the producers won't be able to make a profit because their nominal prices are going down. That's untrue also because input prices go down and producers are concerned about margins. Producers look at profit margin. If their input prices go down and their, <clears throat> their, their for sale prices go down, it will probably be the same if not making a greater profit. What does historical data tell us? Well, in the 1800s, when we had a deflationary time under a free banking system, real wages expanded more rapidly than today. In fact, there's an argument real wages have not increased in the last 30 years. And this is an aggregate based on the wealthier getting higher real wages, where the poor and the middle class get uh, lower real wages. So why, are the, why is the Federal Reserve targeting inflation and destroying the wealth of America and destroying the wealth of the world and, and other uh, central banks following suit like the ECB? Because they're going under an uh, incorrect monetary theory. They believed initially that monetary aggregates, this was Anna Schwartz and Milton Friedman, such as M2, the money supply, was the relevant indicator to target. But then they went back to an older tradition of Knut Vicksell, in which targets something called the natural rate of interest natural rate of interest being the, well, in layman's terms, the productivity of capital, free capital, the profit margin, we'll say. 
But the reality is, because we are on a fiat system, this becomes convoluted and they can't estimate or see the natural rate of interest. So they estimate it with empirical econometric models. They target this. They believe it's falling, but it isn't falling. So they're constantly pushing the interest rate down and they've got a mandate to keep inflation steady and up by 2-3%. But the reality is, if Knut Vicksal was alive today, he'd realize the dynamics of this international productivity increasing S-curve technology-driven economy, and he would agree, I believe, with a deflationary environment. The Federal Reserve should be targeting negative 4% inflation if they do any targeting at all. Better is to let the markets work, have competitive currencies, remove the capital gains tax on cryptocurrencies, foreign currencies, and or uh, precious metals like silver and gold. The markets and relative prices would adjust naturally, and that would bring about about a 4% negative deflation, and we'd all get rich. Meanwhile, the people at the Federal Reserve, they'd lose their jobs, or at least they'd become the night watchmen collecting statistical data for anybody who really cares about that. Me? I care about my pocket and what the economy can do for me. And that best policy in the world is a negative inflation rate, deflation. Deflation is the whole point of economics because the world gets better. Thank you very much.